So this interview with Tim Spector and Stephen Bartlett is currently going very viral and the big headline is calories do not matter or well, they do matter. And to start with some science, these four studies show that calories, when controlled, do help people lose weight. Now, ignoring that, what calories do give us is tangible data. We know a lot about what's in our food and calories are just a good way to measure what's in our food. Otherwise, what tool of measurement are you going to use? The bodybuilding industry has shown that calories being controlled is a great way to lose weight and get in shape. They've built pretty much their whole industry on it. Now, I agree wholeheartedly that calories is not everything. Food quality is seriously important. And Tim's points around gut health, overall health, gut diversity, food diversity, what we should be eating are absolutely on point. But just dismissing calories and being like, oh, they don't matter. No, they do matter and they are helpful. And I really wish there was more context in that conversation about them. I've been a coach for a long time and I use calorie calculating as a tool. I might get a client to do calorie calculating for a month, three, six, nine months, not usually longer than a year because I want to use them to use it as a tool to learn how to manage their food without having to count calories every day, which none of us really want to do. So some of the comments in the video were like calorie counting isn't wholly accurate because we don't know everything about our food. Again, it doesn't matter because it's the best measurement tool we currently have. Looking at other great points from that conversation. Yeah, we should be eating way less ultra processed food. The statistics around how much adults and how much children are eating ultra processed food is is beyond scary. We have to be wary of the sensational claims in this. And this is why critical thinking is really important. A lot of Tim's books feel quite sensationalized why almost everything we've been told about food is wrong i mean everything really that does sound like a media clickbait book title you know there was comments in that conversation like oh even your muesli is bad i've just looked at a packet of muesli it had five ingredients it didn't have added sugar like is that bad no it's not bad but some of the conversation around individualization and starting to listen to your body and how different foods might be better than others was a really interesting topic. And I think there's a lot of future research and validity there for us to start to really hone in our own diets for our own unique physiology. It was really good to get balance in the keto conversation. I actually like it that Tim zoomed out and went, hey, Stephen, you probably just really improved your diet. And actually, it was probably just that that got you the benefit. Keto and many other diets are extreme. And I was really glad that Tim was like, we don't want to be doing this stuff. We want sustainable, healthy, good diet practices long term. So to summarise with calories, yes, yeah, not the be all and end all, but it is a great way to measure progress and measure what's in our food. And if anything, it should be used as an educational tool so people become aware of what's in their food. Because I've had many clients over the years that are like, Ben, I'm eating really well, but I'm not losing weight. And you look at their food diary and there's loads of really high calorie, but healthy foods and they're not losing weight. So we start to adjust the volume of the healthy food, maybe make some swaps, maybe not have, you know, 100 grams of nuts every day, which is highly calorific. And hey, presto, they lose weight. So please don't negate the value of calories. It's the context that's important. There's still an amazing way to lose weight because you start to understand what's in your food and take control of the volume and overall calories in your food. But yes, food quality and variety is super, super important. So in this interview with Tim Spector and Stephen Bartlett, they also talked about vitamins, saying vitamins are really bad and you shouldn't take them. Now, context here is really, really important, in my opinion. Part of the conversation, Tim said, oh, we generally only see benefit when people are deficient. Well, that's a really key point and actually a really key reason you should take vitamins. Tim himself said, oh, I take sometimes bit vitamin B12 because I can be low in it. This is the problem with most people's vitamin taking practices. Most people don't have any idea of what they're taking and why they're taking it. They've read an article online and then they've gone onto Amazon and been like, yeah, bought some calcium, think it's going to benefit this, great, and they just take it. A lot of people are deficient in key nutrients because they don't eat a good diet, they're too stressed, they might exercise too much, they might have a specialist diet, which means that they're more susceptible to nutrient deficiencies. There's actually quite a lot of reasons why someone might be deficient to nutrients. So that, to me, doesn't warrant the claim vitamins are a waste of money and a waste of time. What it 
needs is a proper conversation around it to say what vitamins are you taking or planning to, why, and looking at the research around it and seeing if your symptoms, your goals and the research align to justify taking a vitamin or a mineral supplement. So no, vitamins aren't a waste of money. Context is key. What are you taking and why? So my final and third video about this interview with Tim Spector and Stephen Bartlett is around the exercise claims that they made. Now, exercise in the research, yes, the, what they said around it not contributing to weight loss is true. But when we zoom out, there's a much bigger picture here around weight loss and the role in changing body composition, improving health, etc. Now, exercise helps you build muscle. It strengthens you, it empowers you, it impre increases endurance and cardio and all those beautiful things that we should probably be doing to get the benefits off. When you chalk exercise up, to its impact on overall calorie balance across the course of, course of a week is quite often very minimal. For example, if you go to the gym three days a week and burn 450 calories, that's not a lot. That's like half a day's worth of calories across like a whole week. That's not a lot to get excited about. But what does exercise then do? It strengthens you, it gets your mindset in the right place to lead healthy behaviors, a healthy lifestyle. It gets you into routine, you start to think about fitness more, and you start to essentially become someone that adopts healthy behaviours. It also can be a good way to burn calories, but you've got to be aware of some of the other adaptive mechanisms. Yes, some exercise can make you feel more hungry, so you end up eating more off the back end of it. This is where management of your diet and the other variables is really important, and that's where they started to add a bit more context. But there was a lot of bold claims around exercise and probably not enough context. I exercise, but I exercise to be strong, have a high level of muscle mass, to make me feel good. I don't rely on it as a way to control my weight. I use my diet, my lifestyle, and my general activity to keep my weight at a good healthy level. I personally think that's a very healthy way to approach exercise. So if you do watch this interview, please just be aware of some of the claims and do a bit more research and don't just take the sort of sensationalized headlines um, as kind of gospel because there's a lot of context in between that and there's currently an awful lot of debate online around it and I suppose that's probably why I wanted to film a couple of videos because a lot of people were kind of losing their mind and thinking, oh, calories are a waste of time, exercise are a waste of time, vitamins are a waste of time. It's like, no. Let's add a little bit more context here. So if you've got any more questions off the back of these videos, pop them in the comments and I can do more videos. But if you do go and listen to this interview or you have done, please go in eyes wide open and think critically about some of the claims because there was some wild stuff said, but there were also some very nice conversations that came up and some nice things to look out for in the future in the world of nutrition, health and the personalization of it.